got an interesting little project in today. Um, electric superchargers. Love them or hate them. It's something we've seen over the last few years with the eBay electric hairdryer ones. Very restrictive, don't work, we, we know that. But this is something a little bit different. This is a proper, proper commercial kit. It's a um, 48 volt one. Uh, it should have quite good control over it with, um, at the moment it's just running off a of throttle control with a set of um, RPM. But what we're trying to do is configure it all so we can run PWM, so we can speed control it according to the revs and as the boost increases. Because otherwise it's going to run it's like a constant displacement, so it's going to be effectively the same amount of boost all the time. Or the, the same amount of speed, turbine speed. So it's going to drop off as the revs increase. So that was what we was expecting to see. If I turn the camera around quickly, what we've got is the supercharger there going just straight in. At the moment, there's a few problems with it that we've spotted. We need to have the intake temp sensor to actually monitor what it's doing here. Intake temps are going up. I can feel them going up, but it's not as much as obviously if it was a turbocharger or something. Um, I would like to see it uh, intercooled as well, but it's something, something for the future. So, done the testing today. Let's have a look at the dyno sheets here. Let's just clear this. Right, the car's come in and it's had the charger bolted to it. But what I've done is I've removed the charger and just put a, a filter on and then tuned it. So this is what we're looking at. This is a completely standard FN2, um, standard intake, standard intake manifold, standard exhaust, standard manifold. Now I've remapped that on EcoTech. Uh, it already had one of my stage one on it to start with. It used to have a few mods on, but they've gone back to standard. So it's effectively uh, a really good cold air intake. It was it was like an in-gen that I had sticking out the bonnet to start with. It's cold in here today as well. So with the intake and the remap, that's what I was looking at to start with. We've then bolted the supercharger back on, which we knew was going to be a restriction. This is the supercharger not running. So we knew that it, it would be pulling a restriction on there which is what it's done is we've dropped power everywhere you're going to expect that it's it's a big restriction that's what we used to see with the electric superchargers the 12 volt hairdryer ones that you're getting off of ebay they are a big restriction don't work so wasn't bothered about it but that was our baseline for the kit that's on there um the kit was set up uh, to run at, I think, I believe, 3,000 RPM. So it was a fixed speed as soon as you was full throttle. It's a bit of an issue with the dyno because I need to load it hard to start. So I was banging in about 5 PSI straight away uh, at 2,000 revs, which is yeah, a bit, bit iffy. Um, but, I mean, the motor can handle it, and um, we went away with that. But there you go. There's the boost here, so we started off 0.45 bar, but it's dropped off very quickly as the revs have increased. Bearing in mind it's fixed speed on this charger, so that's your torque. We're up, we're knocking on the door of 200 foot-pound here on a completely standard car with standard um, manifold, cat and exhaust, and then it's dropping off at the top end here. Um, the map I was using again was the, it was the same it was the NA map so this is this is what we're looking at um, ideally once we start going with a PWM output so it's speed controlled I'll be able to ramp it up so I can improve increase the speed I think we can go up to what's the speed that we can go up to on the charger it's about 10,000 isn't it rotary speed 30,000 well, there you go. We're running at the moment 3,000 RPM. We can go up to about 30,000 RPM. It's a very low duty on here at the moment. But um, so much potential with this. And once I can get the PWM uh, output actually synced to the board, at the moment I've wired it all up, but it's just not responding to it at the moment. But once that's done and we finish the testing, I'd expect to see 300 to 350 brake on this. Um, I finished off today. It was a bit too much low down, um, but I finished off today uh, here so I've reduced the boost as it comes in and it drops off really quick so there's actually no boost over seven and a half but 
for drivability. Just look at that. 180, 190 foot pound going up to nearly 200 foot pound mid range, and it's only dropping off up from 6,000. So if I was to overlay that now with the standard map with the car tuned just with an intake. There you go. There you go. So it's making the same power at peak, but look at that torque. Look at that torque. It's the future. It's um, cost-wise, I think we was looking at about two and a half thousand pounds for the kit. Obviously, there's quite a lot of work to do with um, with the control system and setting it all up. The mapping's going to be a bit trick with it, but these things are out there. They're out there running on Audis, Mercedes, and bits and pieces. Now they're, they're using these things on standard road cars. It's old F1 tech. This kit. Um, is available commercially. It was it, the company that's done it has been going for about ten or twelve years now. So it's it's not as though it's um it's old tech or anything like that. It's well, it is relatively old for what's out there now. But there you go. It's looking um looking pretty good for what we've got. Um, so we're going to uh, continue with this. Get the control system working. So we've actually got a good PWM output for speed control from it as well as the throttle control so I can control it all from the map. Um, I can then do different boost levels on the Ecotech with different maps switchable through the app. Um, stick a few mods on, decent manifold, get a big three inch exhaust with a cat on. I reckon we're going to be pushing 350 to 400 brake with this and this is a fraction of the cost of what you're looking at for say a Rotrek supercharger. I think we, we just priced it up and we was looking at getting on for six to eight grand for a Rotrek Super Sport which is intercooled. This I reckon you're probably looking you're gonna probably be looking about four grand. Um that will be in the kit and installed and all mapped. Um which you can't even get the basic sport ones for. So something to think about. Just nice to see some people doing something different.